Super Smash Bros. Brawl was revolutionary in a lot of ways, and one of the biggest ways was the introduction of assist trophies. This new item offered popular characters the opportunity to be included in Smash despite perhaps not being popular enough to be a fighter, or simply not having enough to build an entire moveset out of. And some of them just wouldn't work as fighters. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But while many of these characters are now recognizable from their appearances in Smash, their actual origins are sometimes shrouded in mystery. So let's take a look at the assist trophy origins for Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Andros was a former scientist who was banished due to his dangerous experiments. He was exiled to the planet Venom and has since tried to take over the Lilat system many times. Andros has two forms, his organic form, where he has the form of a monkey, and his mechanical form, which is the appearance he takes on in Smash and is based on his initial design in the very first Star Fox game. This is a pretty odd shape as he seems to just simply be made up of several polygons, but this was the way that the game actually rendered objects. So this was basically a technical limitation more than it was an actual design choice. His function as an assist trophy is based on his primary attack in Star Fox, which is to inhale and spit out square tiles at the player. Barbara the Bat is the mascot of the Jam with the Band series. The first game she appeared in was Daigasso Band Brothers, a Japan-exclusive rhythm game for the Nintendo DS. She acts as the player's guide throughout the game. Daigasso Band Brothers was set to be released internationally under the title Jam with the Band, but it never came out and no news on the cancellation or delay was ever released. A sequel was released in 2008, known as Daigasso Band Brothers Deluxe in Japan. This game did see an international release under the originally planned title, however, again North America missed out as the title was only released in Europe. As an assist trophy, Barbara the Bat pulls out her guitar and serenades us with Wonderwall, which sends out sound waves that knock players around. The Devil is not literally Satan. He comes from the game Devil World, which is a game for the NES developed by Nintendo and released only in Japan and Europe. The game never saw release stateside because of Nintendo of America's stance on religious icons being featured in games. Devil World is a maze-style game where the player controls a green dragon who must collect crosses and bibles and place them into a seal. The devil at the top of the screen acts just as he does in Smash, pointing in a direction and causing the maze to move, forcing the player to adapt. Dr. Wright? No, not him. Him! This Dr. Wright comes from the Super NES version of SimCity. He acts as the advisor for the player, giving them tips on how to manage their city and make it the most successful it can be, while also helping him prevent its destruction from natural disasters, as well as an attack on the city from Bowser. His name comes from the creator of the series, Will Wright. SimCity also saw a sequel for the Nintendo 64, which was developed by HAL, and also saw the return of Dr. Wright. This is a really obscure assist trophy, as this character only appears in Nintendo's versions of SimCity. In all other versions of SimCity, this character is not a thing. EXCITE BIKES! Okay, I'm sorry, I just, whenever I see that word, I just get so excited. The Excite Bikes come from Excite Bike, the game, for the NES. This is actually a pretty basic racing game, where players can race around obstacles and beat the other racers. In the assist trophy, a bunch of bikers come out and they just attack the players, dealing damage to them as then they fall off of the stage to their doom. Gray Fox is a character who comes from the Metal Gear series. He has several different appearances, but the one that is used in Smash is based on his appearance in Metal Gear Solid. Just like in Smash, his main weapon in that game is his sword, and in almost every scenario, guns are ineffective against him. This could also potentially be reflected in Smash by having him naturally reflect any projectiles that hit him. Gray Fox also has some special voice lines that are only available for when he is summoned while Snake is on the field. A Hammer Bro appears as an assist trophy as well, a classic Mario enemy which first appeared in Super Mario Bros., making him a staple of the series for decades. In Smash and the Super Mario Bros. games, Hammer Brothers function as basically a jump and throw hammers machine. As both an assist trophy and an enemy in Subspace Emissary and Smash Run, this function is pretty much perfectly ported over from his game of origin. The Helirin is this gigantic platform. Seriously, how'd he fit in there? Helirin comes from the game Kuru 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 Rin. That is a mouthful which is a puzzle video game released in Japan, Europe, and Australia as a launch title for the Game Boy Advance. The player controls the Helirin as they attempt to maneuver through a maze without touching the walls. The first Kururin game also saw two sequels, which are both much easier to pronounce. Kururin Paradise again for the Game Boy Advance, and then Kururin Squash for the GameCube. Despite being a release in 2001, 
North America did not see the release of this game until 2016 on the Wii U Virtual Console. The infantry and tanks come from the Nintendo Wars series, a turn-based tactics game. While most will know them from Advance Wars, which was the first taste the international market got for the series, this series actually started way back on the Famicom, and the naming convention was based on the console that the game was made for. As a result, there is a huge list of Wars games. Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars 1, Turbo 2 and 3, and Super Famicom Wars. However, after Advance Wars came out and the international market got a taste for the series, the Advance Wars name stuck for the main series, despite having entries on the Wii and DS as well as the Game Boy Advance. Everyone's Boy Isaac debuted as, and unfortunately has stayed as, an assist trophy since Brawl. Isaac is the main character of Golden Sun, an RPG for the Game Boy Advance. Golden Sun had two sequel games as well. Golden Sun The Lost Age came out a year after the first game, and Golden Sun Dark Dawn released for the DS in 2010. As an assist trophy, Isaac uses the synergy literally called Move. I wonder how long it took the writers to come up with that one. Smash uses Move to simply shove players with a giant hand, but in Golden Sun, this is typically used in the environment to move objects and solve puzzles. In Ultimate, Isaac receives Teleport and Pound in his arsenal as well, both of which are also typically used in the overworld and are used to solve puzzles in Golden Sun. Jeff Andonuts is one of Ness's party members in Earthbound for the Super NES. Another character, Paula, reaches out telepathically to Jeff when she and Ness are held captive in 3. Jeff steals the Skyrunner and manages to save them, securing his place as a party member. Not being a psychic himself, Jeff instead uses rockets, guns, and other weapons. This is reflected in his assist trophy attack as he launches bottle rockets which will attack all opposing players. He is also in Smash 4 and Ultimate, functioning exactly the same way. Next up is Jill, the main character of the Game Boy Advance game Drill Dozer, developed by Game Freak. Jill's father is the leader of a bandit gang who possesses the Red Diamond. A rival gang, the Skulkers, manage to steal the Red Diamond, and Jill uses the Drill Dozer to attempt to get it back, and of course gets into all sorts of wacky hijinks along the way. This is Jill's only non-Smash appearance, as this game was pretty much a one-off. The game itself came with a rumble feature built into the game pack, making it much larger than a typical Game Boy Advance game. Kat and Anna come from the WarioWare series. These characters' names spell out the word Katana, which is meant to be a pun because the two girls come from a family of ninjas. They first debuted in WarioWare Inc. Mega Microgames for the GameCube, and have been regulars in the series ever since. Strangely, though their name is based on a katana, neither girl actually wields one. Knuckle Joe is an enemy from the Kirby series, first appearing in Kirby Superstar for the Super NES. Kirby gains the fighter ability when absorbing Knuckle Joe, or he can sacrifice the ability in order to spawn a helper form of the enemy. These helpers appear differently from the actual enemies and obviously are on Kirby's side. The Knuckle Joe in Smash is based on the ally sprite from Superstar and performs the same attacks that Knuckle Joe can use alongside Kirby. Lakitu and Spiney's first debuted in Super Mario Bros., making their first appearance in World 4-1. Lakitu hovers at the top of the screen while throwing Spiney's down to potentially harm the player. In Smash, this function is nearly identical, though it only lasts for a limited time rather than being a constant threat. Lakitu and Spiney's have both become staples to the Mario series, appearing in pretty much anything Mario-related as enemies, allies, or even just innocent bystanders. Next up is the Bruiser from the Bronx. Before Little Mac joined the character roster as my personal nemesis, he was but a lowly assist trophy. His attacks are pretty basic, having only two basic jabs and an uppercut. These, however, are very strong, just like his future moveset would be. He's also kind of dumb though, and sometimes he'll just jump straight off the stage unable to recover, also kind of like him as a fighter. His first appearance was in the arcade version of Punch-Out, followed by the NES version of Punch-Out a few years later. His design as an assist trophy is mostly Smash original, being loosely based on his sprite, but with certain creative liberties taken by the design team. This design is used because Brawl predates the Wii version of Punch-Out where they redesigned Little Mac, so they had nothing to go on but the actual sprite. Lin comes from Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade. She's the player's earliest ally and party member, and plays a crucial role in the story. She is also notable because while she can actually lose all HP and die in gameplay, she will remain a part of the story, something that Fire Emblem had never done before the Blazing Blade. Unlike most other Fire Emblem reps in Smash, Lin does not wield the most powerful weapon she can obtain in the game. 
Instead of wielding the Soul Kadi, she only wields the Mani Kadi. Her attacks are a mix of her critical and normal attacks. A literal Metroid appears as the next assist trophy. These creatures appeared in the very first Metroid game as an enemy, and of course are highly important to the series, being the basis for the series' name. In both Smash and Metroid, they attack by latching onto the player and constantly dealing damage. This form of a Metroid is technically a Metroid larva. While fully grown Metroids have taken various forms throughout the series, such as Queen Metroid or Metroid Prime. Mr. Rossetti appears as an assist trophy for the first and only time in Brawl. He hails from the Animal Crossing series and serves as the punishment for a player powering off or resetting their game without saving. He will bombard the player with text and bother them for an insane amount of time, usually requiring an apology. In Smash, he appears and yells at the players in a very similar way, blocking a large portion of the screen from view and basically just irritating all players. He can also be attacked, and if attacked enough can cause an explosion that damages players. The Nintendogs act similarly to Mr. Rossetti, being a huge eyesore to players. When summoned, the Nintendogs will go right up to the camera and stare or paw at it, blocking a huge amount of the screen. This behavior comes from the Nintendogs games, where the dogs will greet the player at the start of a new play session in this same way. The breed chosen for Brawl was the Labrador Retriever, which Sakurai has stated is because of its wide popularity across the globe. Smash 4 and Ultimate both see the return of Nintendogs with the exact same function, though the amount of time is shortened and the breed of dog is different. In Smash 4, the breed is a French Bulldog, while in Ultimate, the breed is a Toy Poodle. Ray Mark III comes from the Custom Robo series, first appearing in Custom Robo Arena on the Nintendo DS, and is the Robo model used by the main character in that game. This Robo was an upgrade from the Ray Mark II featured in a previous entry in the series. While this assist trophy was missing from Smash 4, it made its triumphant return in Ultimate, alongside a Mii Fighter costume. Saki Amamiya is from Sin and Punishment, Successor of the Earth. This N64 game was an Asia-exclusive game, but developed a cult following leading to its release on the Wii Virtual Console in 2007. The game's success on the Virtual Console led to the sequel's development, which was released in 2009. Saki's weapon of choice is the Dolphin Gun, which has a blaster and beam sword form, both of which can be used in his assist trophy attack in Smash. Samurai Goro comes from the F-Zero series and is a rival racer to Captain Falcon. He appears in the first F-Zero and he pilots the Fire Stingray. He appears in other future F-Zero titles as well, and in Melee he's featured in the opening movie very, very briefly. Samurai Goro uses his katana to attack players in Smash, which is really only elaborated on in manuals and comics and things like that, as F-Zero is purely a racing game. Arguably the most popular character on this list, Shadow the Hedgehog joined Smash as an assist trophy alongside Sonic, who was a fighter. He refers to himself as the ultimate life form, and he was created by Dr. Eggman's grandfather. His debut game was Sonic Adventure 2, and he's been an integral part of the Sonic series ever since. Shadow can utilize various powers due to his natural connection to the Chaos Emeralds. His trademark power is Chaos Control, allowing him to manipulate space and slow down time. This is shown on a smaller scale in Smash, where all players besides the ally fighter will be slowed down for a short amount of time. Next up is Starfy, who comes from the legendary Starfy series. This series had its first release in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance, after being initially developed for the Game Boy Color. The first four games were also Japan exclusive titles, and it wouldn't be until the most recent fifth game's release in 2009 that the series would see sales outside of Japan. These games are platforming games starring Starfy and usually involve him fixing a problem for his or another kingdom. His attack as an assist trophy comes from his most basic attack in these games. Tingle somehow stumbled his way into an assist trophy after being a part of the Great Base stage for Melee. He comes from the Legend of Zelda series, first appearing in the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. He's a middle-aged man who dresses in an all-green jumpsuit and is convinced that he is the reincarnation of a fairy, much to his family's shame. He's been seen in many Zelda games since Majora's Mask, and his appearance in Smash is based on his design from Wind Waker, made to match Toon Link's addition to Brawl. Tingle as an assist trophy summons random effects when he's called on while saying his famous catchphrase. These range from summoning hammers, increasing the odds of tripping, zooming the camera in on himself, giving everyone the super spicy curry status, and simply flying away doing nothing at all. None of this is really based on anything from the Zelda series, as Tingle is really just a map maker in those games, and so it's more so based on Tingle's odd nature and behavior. 
And lastly, but absolutely not least in any way, Waluigi. Waluigi has been in all Smash games since Brawl, though unfortunately he's never been anything more than an assist trophy. Waluigi's first appearance was for the N64 game Mario Tennis, when it occurred to the design team that Wario didn't really have a partner like any of the other characters. As an assist trophy, Waluigi wields his tennis racket and runs around kicking players, potentially burying them in the ground. He can then either kick the player away or send them flying with his tennis racket. The tennis racket that he uses in Smash is the exact same design that Waluigi had in Mario Tennis, the very first game he was in. Ashley first appears as an assist trophy in Smash 4 after only having a sticker and song reference in Brawl. When summoned, she will activate a cloud area that slows down all opposing players inside of it, while also doing various other effects, such as turning them invisible, putting them into a helpless state, or making food deal damage instead of healing. Ashley comes from the WarioWare series, making her first appearance in WarioWare Touched. She's a witch who lives with a demon named Red. Red can transform into anything, including the wand Ashley uses to cast spells. The Chain Chomp is an enemy from the Super Mario universe, making its first appearance in Super Mario Bros. 3. They've been a recurring enemy in the franchise ever since, with their appearance in Smash being based on their more modern 3D design. They function in Smash pretty similarly to their behavior in Mario games. They have a limited range, being stuck to a post in the ground, but they can launch forward to their maximum distance very quickly and deal damage and knockback to players. Color TV Game 15, not Pong, they are very clear on that, that is not Pong, that is Color TV Game 15. This is an assist trophy based on one of Nintendo's earliest gaming console attempts. This is a game from the late 1970s, when gaming consoles existed exclusively to play a single game. Color TV Game 15 was one of the many Pong clones being produced at the time. The 15 in the name stands for 15 different modes that the console came with, all different variations of Pong. These different modes would change things like the number of paddles available or the size of the scoring area, and they're based on different sports such as tennis, hockey, volleyball, and ping pong. Before Dark Samus's addition as an Echo Fighter in Ultimate, she became an assist trophy rep in Smash 4. She also has more unique attacks as an assist trophy than she does as a fighter, which is kind of ironic. First, she can fire a large ball of electricity, which deals considerable damage but does low knockback. Her second attack is four smaller homing balls of electricity. And lastly, she uses her Phazon tentacles as a close-range attack, pulling them out of the ground. After Samus defeated Metroid Prime, it grabbed onto her and stole her Phazon suit. After adapting itself to the Phazon suit, as well as taking some of Samus's DNA remnants and applying it to itself, Dark Samus was born, with all of Samus's abilities and intelligence. Dylan the Armadillo is basically Dollar Store Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, they both spin! What more do I need to say? They are the same character. Alright, so Dylan is from Dylan's Rolling Western, a 3DS eShop exclusive released in 2012. This game was followed up by Dylan's Rolling Western The Last Ranger, a sequel released in 2013, and Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers in 2018. The gameplay of this series is a combination of tower defense and action game, and Dylan's primary attack is spinning. This translates over into Smash by being his only attack, bouncing across the screen several times while spinning before vanishing away. Next up, we have the big man himself, Dr. Kawashima. Many will recognize him as the host of the Brain Age series, acting as your guide throughout the games. But this character is based off of a real-world person closely linked to the Brain Age series. Ryuta Kawashima is a neuroscientist located in Chiba City, Japan, who wrote a book based on his years of research called Train Your Brain, 60 Days to a Better Brain. When Nintendo was searching for ideas that catered to both traditional and casual gamers, the CFO of Nintendo of Japan recommended the book for inspiration. Following this, Satoru Iwata, then president of Nintendo, arranged for a meeting with the author. While they had trouble due to busy schedules, they finally managed to squeeze in an hour of each other's time, which quickly turned into three hours as Kawashima explained the basics of his studies and Iwata theorized how this could be turned into a video game. As a way of honoring the author, Kawashima was modeled as the guide for the game. As an assist trophy, Dr. Kawashima launches numbers at the players. These can be attacked by the players, sending them in a different direction. If two numbers collide, they will be added together, and if the result is 10 or higher, the number will explode, with exactly 10 causing a huge explosion. With Mega Man joining the roster in Smash 4, a whole new world of characters became available as well. Elec Man was chosen as an assist trophy to represent classic Mega Man bosses. Elec Man is one of the six robot masters found in the very first Mega Man game for the NES. 
In Mega Man, all of the Robot Masters were made by Dr. Light, but then were corrupted by Dr. Wily in his attempt to take over the world. In the original game, Elecman's weakness is Cutman's weapon, the Rolling Cutter, which is an allusion to snipping wires. But in the remake Mega Man Powered Up, two additional Robot Masters were introduced, and the weaknesses were rearranged as a result. Elecman's new weakness is the Oil Slider, Oil Man's weapon, which is a reference to how oil is a poor conductor of electricity. Elecman's attack in Smash functions similarly to his attack in his home game. He will run and jump around the stage, shooting electricity in one of three directions. Occasionally, he will send electricity in two directions, and the rarest is sending it in all three. Next up is Girahim, who comes from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. While initially it's not clear who Girahim is, it's soon revealed that he's a servant of the Demon King Demise, and it was Girahim who caused all of the game's problems in an attempt to resurrect his master. Link takes on Girahim several times throughout the game, and his tactics and abilities change slightly each time. He has the ability to teleport, throw knives, and fight using a rapier. These are all reflected in Smash, as he will teleport around the stage, throw knives from a distance, and use his rapier up close. Next, these guys don't really need much introduction. It's the ghosts from Pac-Man. Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. These ghosts may as well be pulled directly from the arcade game and placed straight into Smash. Not only do they match the 8-bit art style, their behavior is identical as well. Blinky takes the shortest route to nearby enemies, Pinky will try to move in front of the enemies, Inky moves opposite to Blinky, and Clyde moves randomly. In the arcade game, when a certain number of pellets are eaten, Blinky will speed up. This is emulated in Smash, but since there aren't any pellets, it's simply based on a timer. Additionally, all of the ghosts will speed up rather than just Blinky. Interestingly, while the names of the ghosts are very well known, these aren't the real character names. In the English version of Pac-Man, they are given proper names, with the well-known names simply described as their nicknames. Blinky's real name is Shadow, Pinky is named Speedy, Inky is named Bashful, and Clyde is named Pokey. These names are meant to serve as hints at how the ghosts behave in-game. Isabelle first debuted in Smash 4 as an assist trophy, and of course wouldn't be promoted to fighter until the next installment. As an assist trophy, her function is very basic. She stays in a single spot, tossing healing fruit out to the player who summoned her. She will also react to the player's performance, hunching over if the player is KO'd, and cheering if the player scores a KO. Isabelle is of course from Animal Crossing New Leaf, serving as the mayor's secretary. Her skyrocket in popularity likely resulted in her inclusion as an assist trophy, as she couldn't be a fighter due to the roster already being decided. Of course, she got her chance in Ultimate and was welcomed by the community with open arms. Magnus hails from Kid Icarus Uprising. While many of the characters in the game are mythical beings, Magnus is actually a human and is considered the strongest human in the world. In two chapters, Pit and Magnus team up, and in a third chapter, Magnus is called upon to fight Pit as a way of proving Pit's worth. Upon defeat, Magnus compliments Pit's abilities. His function as an assist trophy is admittedly pretty basic, simply running around and swinging his sword at players. Midna also appears as an assist trophy. Just like the Link from Smash 4, she originates from Twilight Princess. She first appears to help Link break out of a prison cell after he's been transformed into a wolf, and she acts as the player's guide throughout the game. While in wolf form, Minna rides on top of Link, but while in human form, she simply hides in his shadow. Her weird magical hair has the ability to change into a hand and move objects, which is used as her attack as an assist trophy. If no opponents are nearby, she will teleport closer in an attempt to grab them. By the end of Twilight Princess, her true form is revealed, and it's explained that a curse by Ganondorf caused her to take on this impish form. Next, it's the mother of all brains. Mother Brain. She's an artificial intelligence created by the Chozo. However, she turned against them when the space pirates attacked her planet, believing that she had well surpassed her own creators. She also calculated that becoming leader of the space pirates would help her to attain peace in the universe. Ironically, through violence and war. It's always through violence and war, isn't it? Why isn't it ever through candy? Why don't you conquer the universe with candy? Man, I'd like a piece of candy. As an assist trophy, her design is based on her most basic form, rather than the several attempts to construct her a body. Her basic attack is her laser brain attack. She's also surrounded by Rinka enemies, those small rings, and she can actually be attacked. After she uses her attack, her glass will shatter, and if she takes enough damage in this shattered state, she can actually be defeated, very much like in her home series. Next up is Nightmare, the final boss of Kirby's Adventure and its remake, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. King Dedede sealed Nightmare inside of the Star Rod, however, Kirby didn't know this. 
As a result, when Kirby reassembled the Star Rod and placed it in the Fountain of Dreams, Nightmare was released, and it was up to Kirby to defeat him, because DDD launched him and forced him to. His design in Smash comes from his appearance in Nightmare in Dreamland, which in turn was based on the redesign that he saw in the Kirby Right Back At You anime. His assist trophy attack first has him appear in his orb form before turning into the true form, which then results in him blacking out the entire screen for all players. While this attack isn't necessarily part of Nightmare's fights in Kirby games, it could be a reference to Nightmare's goal of infecting the world with dark nightmares, or to his completely dark core that's hidden beneath his cloak. Phosphora is yet another character from Kid Icarus Uprising. She's one of the captains of Viridi's forces of nature, and commands power over electricity. When Pit first encounters her, she fights and quickly defeats Thanatos, the god of death and Medusa's second in command. She sustained serious injuries from this fight, but despite that, she's still on equal footing during her fight with Pit just after. Viridi revives her, and she again makes an appearance later on in the game. In Smash, Phosphora teleports and flies around the stage, and to no one's surprise, launches electricity in different kinds of attacks. A big sphere, several small spheres, or small rapid shots. Next is Ricky, the Napon declared the Hiropon from his culture's prophecies. He's one of the later party member additions in Xenoblade Chronicles. It becomes revealed that Ricky's role in the prophecy is actually a farce, merely being an excuse by the elders as a means of having Ricky pay off a colossal amount of debt that he's built up due to his 11 children's appetites. He's very useful in battle, having quite a number of helpful arts. Six of these are represented in his assist trophy, and he will use three of them at random when he's summoned. Happy Happy increases the launch rate and attack power of all fighters. Freezenate obviously freezes. Yoink pulls items towards Ricky. Bedtime puts opponents to sleep. You can do it heals all fighters close enough to Ricky. And finally, Roly Poly will trip all opponents if they are touching the ground. The Sable Prince comes from Kero Notame Nikane Wanaru, or in English, the frog for whom the bell tolls, a Japan exclusive for the Game Boy similar in style to the Zelda series. As the title suggests, this game features the prince, who's capable of transforming into either a frog or a snake through the use of a witch's potion. Both of these forms are reflected in the prince's assist trophy, as he will transform into either one and then attack and trap a player in a cloud of dust that deals damage. The dust cloud is a reference in itself. In the prince's home game, the turn-based combat system pits the player and their enemy into a battle inside of a dust cloud, automatically exchanging hits until either one dies. REACH FOR THE SKIES! The Sheriff comes from the arcade game Sheriff, released in 1979 and developed by Nintendo. In this game, a Sheriff is surrounded by bandits and must shoot at the bandits while avoiding the enemy fire. Sheriff is unique in its controls. A joystick is used to move the Sheriff around, while a dial is used to aim and fire in eight different directions. The movement in Smash is exactly the same, as the Sheriff is able to move in one direction while firing in a different one. The sequel game, Sheriff 2, removed the dial and simply had a shoot button meaning the sheriff could only fire in the direction he was facing, but bringing the controls onto a similar level as other arcade games at the time. A character that everyone expected to join the roster by now, Skull Kid debuted and has remained an assist trophy. Skull Kid technically debuts in Ocarina of Time, as they seem to be a race of beings. However, the Skull Kid in Smash is of course from Majora's Mask, the sequel to Ocarina of Time. In this game, Skull Kid starts out as a troublemaker with his two fairy friends. Apparently, there is a whole backstory where Skull Kid got on everyone's nerves so much, they called upon the four giants, the literal gods of the realm, and the giants were forced to send Skull Kid away on threat of death. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Skull Kid and the fairies attack the Happy Mask salesman, and Skull Kid steals Majora's Mask, an ancient mask created by an ancient tribe for rituals but which became too powerful and had to be sealed away. Skull Kid and Majora, as revenge for being sent away, bring the moon down to destroy the land of Termina. And of course, it's up to Link to stop it with some time travel shenanigans. That's about as rough a summary as I can give of Majora's Mask without just jumping into Zelda lore and explaining the entire game. In Smash, Skull Kid uses the power of Majora's Mask to influence the playfield. He can either flip and mirror the camera, reverse all controls, or turn everyone invisible. Well, at least we don't have to see this thing in the game. Next up is Starman, an enemy from the Earthbound series. Starman originated in Mother 1 and returned in Earthbound. 
They are aliens who come to Earth as a part of Gygus's army, and they are considered some of the earliest users of PSI abilities. Their attacks are based on the attacks that they can use in the Mother series. They can use PK Beam Gamma, which is a single beam, or PK Beam Omega, which is a barrage of beams. While many assist trophies can be defeated, Starman is unique in that the phrase SMASH appears when he is defeated, based on the text that appears at Earthbound when a move deals a critical hit. And finally is Takamaru, the protagonist from the mysterious Murasame Castle. This game was one of the earliest Famicom titles ever, being the second entirely original game made for the system, released just after The Legend of Zelda. This game was also a Japan exclusive release, and Takamaru's first international appearance wouldn't be until Samurai Warriors 3, a Dynasty Warriors spin-off for the Wii. The mysterious Murasame Castle features a top-down view for gameplay, in which the player must obtain four gems from nearby castles in order to defeat Murasame. It takes heavily from Japanese culture, with enemies being based on samurai, ninja, and hanya, and the player's base weapons being shurikens and a katana. The shuriken can be upgraded into different weapons, and this is actually seen in his assist trophy depiction. While he still wields and attacks with his katana, Takamaru also throws the upgraded windmill swords in four directions at once. Takamaru was considered as a character for both Melee and Smash 4, but due to low popularity he was scrapped and was simply made an assist trophy instead. First up is Akira, who joins the fight from the Virtua Fighter series, which is considered the first ever 3D fighting game. As the mascot of this series, this is Akira's second time being represented in Smash. In Smash 4, a Mii Brawler skin was available for purchase, released at the same time as Lucas, Roy, and Ryu. However, in Smash Ultimate, Akira was bumped up to assist trophy, where his personality can really shine. His appearance is based on the original Virtua Fighter, which was for arcade systems and the Sega Saturn and 32X. His animations and moves resemble the original game as well, so they're accordingly very clunky and choppy. Akira moves around the stage attacking players, occasionally blocking attacks, and he can even use his signature Tetsu Zanko move. Alucard hails from the Castlevania series, joining Smash alongside Simon and Richter. Alucard is the human vampire son of Dracula, who first appeared in Castlevania 3 and has been a recurring character in the series ever since. His most well-known appearance is his role in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and it's for this reason that Sakurai actually considered Alucard as a Castlevania rep before settling on the pair of Belmonts. Alucard's true name is Adrian Fahrenheit Tepes, and long story short, his mother is burned at the stake for witchcraft, causing his father, Dracula, to swear revenge against the entire human race. Adrian believes this to be misguided and tries to warn his father, who rejects this idea and injures his son in the process. Adrian then takes on the name Alucard, which is Dracula backwards, to represent his opposition to his father. Alucard's abilities in Smash reflect his gameplay in Symphony of the Night. He wields the Chris Grim, an extremely powerful blade. He can use the Power of Mist, which lets him travel through walls and avoid attacks, and he can use Soul of Bat, which is his bat transformation attack. He also has both of his jump kick and backdash attacks. The Arcade Bunny is the host of the Nintendo Badge Arcade. This was an app for the 3DS which let the player play a crane game to earn badges which could then be used to decorate the home menu. Some of these badges could even serve as replacement icons for some of the 3DS's built-in software, such as the camera or music apps, and there was even compatibility with Swapdoodle. The badges were typically based off of Nintendo franchises, and new badges were added regularly. The game stopped being updated mid-2017, though it's still playable to this day. The Arcade Bunny's assist trophy summons a crane game, which will attempt to grab players and pull them to the top of the screen and into the blast zone. Anyone caught in the claw can mash out, and the claw itself has three tries to drop down and grab players before disappearing. If the claw KOs an opponent, it will also disappear. Black Knight is another Mii costume turned assist trophy. From the Fire Emblem series, Black Knight is the primary antagonist of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, both games that Ike is from. The Black Knight is a mysterious knight whose identity is not known to anyone. The Black Knight kills Ike's father early in Path of Radiance, and at that moment, Ike is filled with a passion to defeat the Black Knight to avenge his father's death, which extends all the way into the sequel game when Ike finally does just that. The Black Knight as an assist trophy moves across the stage slowly, swinging his sword, Alandite, in huge arcs. He is incredibly powerful and very difficult to KO. The Mii costume for Mii Swordfighter also makes a return in Ultimate as a purchasable item in the in-game shop. 
Bomberman is one of the newest third-party assist trophies to the Smash series, which was a bit disappointing to those who wanted him as a fighter. Bomberman is the main character of the Bomberman series, which first debuted on a series of home computers in July 1983 in Japan. This is a strategy game where the player must defeat enemies using bombs that explode in specific patterns. These games were very small-scale releases meant only to serve as a tech demo for Hudson Soft, and Bomberman's design was not at all what we are familiar with today. But due to its success, a Famicom version was developed and was released in December 1985 in Japan, and in 1987 for the international NES. The success of the console version would spawn the entire Bomberman series, and Bomberman himself has appeared in over 70 different games. But ironically, Bomberman's first appearance was not in his own game. In Hudson Soft's NES title, Load Runner, Bomberman were portrayed as the enemy robots, and this is the first time that the design was ever used by the developer. When Bomberman was being made for the NES, they decided to repurpose the sprite by recoloring it and making it the player's character. This is why Bomberman is sometimes referred to as White Bomberman. In the end sequence of Bomberman, it's revealed that Bomberman becomes human and goes on to be the protagonist of Load Runner. So weirdly, Bomberman is actually a prequel to Load Runner. In Smash, Bomberman does exactly what you'd expect. He jumps around the stage, placing bombs that explode in their classic cross pattern. He can also drop remote bombs, which will explode randomly rather than on a timer like his normal bombs. As a reference to his home game, Bomberman can even be KO'd by his own explosions. The Burrowing Snagrit is an enemy from the Pikmin series, first debuting in the original Pikmin. Its design has stayed relatively similar, however in Pikmin 3 it did receive an update to make it a bit more detailed. Its attack in Smash and its attack in its home series are pretty much identical. It will pop up from underground, pause for a moment, and then peck at opponents. It will then dig back down and reappear somewhere else to repeat its attack. This happens several times before it finally disappears. Chef Kawasaki cooks up his competition in his Assist Trophy debut. From the Kirby series, his first appearance was in Kirby Superstar for the Super NES. He's a mini-boss who provides the cook ability upon defeat. He had only two attacks in his first appearance, throwing dishes and silverware from a distance and using his ladle to scoop enemies into a frying pan to cook them. His assist attacks reflect this original appearance, as these are both of the attacks he can use at any time. However, instead of a frying pan, Chef Kawasaki cooks opponents in a big pot which spawns food items as well as launching the opponent away. This assist trophy is a repurposing of Kirby's final smash from Brawl, Cook Kirby, with of course additional attacks and altered item spawns. The award for most random assist trophy goes to Flies and Hand. These come from the Nat Attack minigame in the Super NES game Mario Paint. This game is played with the Super NES mouse and was basically a point-and-click minigame where the player swats at flies. Likewise, this assist trophy is very straightforward. Flies will spawn alongside the fly swatter, and the hand will swat at flies randomly. If opponents are near the flies when they get swatted, they will also take damage and knockback. Alongside Ryu and Ken, Guile from the Street Fighter series joined Smash. Guile first debuted in Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior and has been a recurring character in nearly every iteration of Street Fighter thereafter. He comes from the United States and is a major in the Air Force. His signature moves are the Flash Kick and Sonic Boom, and these are both reflected in Smash. However, the implementation is incredibly meta. There's a tactic in Street Fighter called Down Backing, which refers to the input of crouching while blocking, which is what Guile does. Holding down and back can ready both Flash Kick and Sonic Boom inputs, so the player can use whichever is necessary at a moment's notice. Basically, they can spam out Sonic Booms, and if the opponent tries to get in and jump over one, they can be hit by Flash Kick. This is a well-known tactic to use against low-level players, and it obviously receives a lot of hate. But I think it's pretty hilarious that it, it's included in Smash Ultimate. Cap-In comes from Animal Crossing, debuting in the very first of the series. In this game, he ferries players to the island if a Game Boy Advance is connected, singing, being sarcastic, and even flirting with female players. In Wild World, he shuttles players via a taxi, and in City Folk, he drives a bus to the player's city. In New Leaf, he again ferries players to the island. His bus appearance is what's reflected in his assist trophy, however. He will drive the bus across the stage, and if it comes into contact with the player, they will be forcibly boarded and driven towards the blast zone. The trap player can mash out to attempt to get out, and if this happens, another player can be picked up. Cap'n will attempt this several times by teleporting back to the stage if he's unsuccessful, and then he will disappear. 
Claptraps first showed up in Donkey Kong Country, and they are one of the most common enemies from the Kremlin crew. While Claptraps as an assist trophy didn't appear until Ultimate, they have appeared in every Smash game except for Smash 64 and Smash for Wii U, as they are stage hazards on the Congo Falls and Jungle Jape stages. Their attack as an assist trophy sees them latching onto opponents and biting constantly, dealing damage. It will then let go and then just sort of mosey around and look for another victim to chomp on. Another character that many had hoped would appear as a fighter, Knuckles was revealed as an assist trophy for Smash Ultimate. His first appearance in the Sonic series was in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 as a kind of antagonist. Dr. Eggman tricked Knuckles to oppose Sonic and Tails and slow them down as they pursued Eggman to stop him. Knuckles then became playable in Sonic and Knuckles, and this was meant to be the second half of Sonic 3 initially, but because of time constraints, the two became separate games that could be merged using Sega's lock-on technology. Since this pair of games, Knuckles has become a main character in the series, becoming a trio with Sonic and Tails. In Ultimate, his attacks are based on several of the abilities found across the large library of Sonic games. First, he has a burrowing attack, which has been seen in several games like Sonic Adventure and Adventure 2, Sonic Battle, and Sonic Generations. Another recurring ability is the homing attack, which Knuckles was first able to use in Sonic Heroes. His final ability is just straight up punching with his abnormally sized hands, which has often been Knuckles' go-to attack. However, an actual combo that he uses in Ultimate is very close to a combo from Sonic the Fighters. Crystal fulfills our furry quota and comes from the Star Fox series. At times, she's been a member of Team Star Fox, and she's also Fox's love interest. Crystal was originally designed for a Nintendo 64 game by Rare called Dinosaur Planet. Nintendo requested that this game become a Star Fox game and be developed for the GameCube instead of the N64, so this title would soon become Star Fox Adventures. As a result, Rare reused the designs they came up with for Dinosaur Planet, and Crystal became a character in that game. Just like in Smash, she wields a staff, but loses it when she's captured by Andross, and Fox manages to find it and uses it as a weapon himself. As you can expect, her portrayal in Smash is based on Star Fox Adventures as she uses the staff in her attack. She deals freezing damage, which is based on Ice Blast, an upgrade for the staff available in Adventures. Next, we have the Literal Moon. If you tuned into the last episode, or you're just familiar with Majora's Mask, you'll recognize this as the moon that Skull Kid pulled down to destroy the city of Termina in that game. It's been in Smash before in the background of the Great Base stage, but it's always just been eye candy. Now it, it can be summoned, and when it is, the moon will crash down on the playfield and cause huge damage and knockback before exploding. Nikki is the host of Swap Note and Swap Doodle, Nintendo's messaging apps for the 3DS. She would give the players tips, teach them how the app worked, and even give them news. She's made other appearances in other games such as Art Academy and Super Mario Maker, and she currently exists in the Nintendo News section. Initially, she appeared as just a me, but then she was given an updated design that was in a 2D form. Her appearance in Smash is a 3D version of this new 2D design. She'll chill out in the bottom left corner like she does in her Origin series, and she'll draw several objects on screen which will impact the playfield. She can draw a bullet bill, which acts just like the item, a dragon, which will breathe fire and deal knockback, a ghost, which will paralyze opponents if they get hit, a flock of birds, which launches opponents, a pinwheel, which blows players around, and a smash ball, which is just a smash ball. The biggest surprise assist trophy is absolutely Rathalos, who comes from the Monster Hunter series. Rathalos is not only an assist trophy, but also a boss at the end of many characters' classic mode runs. Rathalos are a species of wyvern that can be hunted in the series. Rathalos debuted in the original Monster Hunter, and they're dubbed the King of the Skies. Their attacks from the home series are also well reflected in Smash. As a boss fight, he can glide in the background and rush to the foreground to hit fighters, roar loudly to stun them, dash forward and tackle, attack with their poisonous claws by both flying and landing, dealing poison damage, blast out fireballs in a variety of patterns, and spin around attacking with its tail. As an assist trophy, some of these attacks do not appear. Rathalos cannot fly in the background, nor can it deal poison damage despite using the same moves. On top of this, items that work in his boss fight, like Deku Nuts and Pitfalls, do not work on his assist trophy form. Rodin joins the Smash universe from the Bayonetta series. Rodin used to be a high-ranking angel in Paradiso, but after an attempt to take it over, he was cast away to Inferno, where he now hails as one of the highest-ranking demons. He harvests souls and fuses them into weapons, which is where Bayonetta receives her guns. He runs a bar called Gates of Hell, and the player can purchase weapons and upgrades from him. In Smash, he has similar moves to Bayonetta. He has a move similar to Wicked Weaves, however, while Bayonetta's version of the move summons Madama Butterfly's limbs, Rodin's version summons his own. He can also use his own form of Afterburner Kit. 
Just before he leaves the stage, he will toss a few items to the player who summoned him, a reference to his role as a shopkeeper. Shovel Knight's addition as an assist trophy marks the second time ever that an independent developer has had any of their properties represented in Smash, and the first time as an assist trophy. The first was Commander Video, who was represented as a normal trophy in Smash 4. Shovel Knight of course comes from the game Shovel Knight, a 2D side-scrolling platformer developed by Yacht Club Games. The game found massive success. After being successfully kickstarted and released on PC, Wii U, and 3DS, the game has since been ported to PlayStation 3, 4, Vita, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, and Nintendo Switch. They've also received two additional campaigns for the title, with a third on the way and a multiplayer fighting game in the works. Shovel Knight's moves in Smash are directly pulled from his abilities in his home game. He can dig up the ground, occasionally digging up items and hitting players with dirt. He can also bury opponents in the ground and uses his shovel drop attack to jump on top of opponents. One of the newest Nintendo IPs, Springman is the rep from the ARMS series. He's the mascot for the series and was one of the first characters revealed for the game. ARMS is a fighting game series made by Nintendo which features boxer-esque fighting but with the quirk that the fighters have massively extendable arms, whether through natural means or through some kind of machinery. In Smash, Springman uses the toaster arm, which is one of his default arms in ARMS, and he has quite a wide range to aim punches at opposing players. He can also rush down opponents, attacking with a flurry of punches that end in one big hit. Springman is also the newest assist trophy in terms of his creation. His debut in June 2017 makes him the youngest of all assist trophies. And speaking of Nintendo IPs, the Squid Sisters also debut in Ultimate. Callie and Marie are from the Splatoon series, and are a pair of pop idols who are also the hosts of Inkopolis News. Upon booting up the game, or when multiplayer content has cycled, they will announce which stages are available for multiplayer, as well as information on upcoming updates and Splatfests. Callie and Marie play a more integral part of Splatoon 2's campaign, with Marie being the player's guide in Octo Canyon, and Callie being kidnapped and serving as a boss. Throughout the Splatoon games, they can be seen singing, and so they've been given this function in Smash. Upon being summoned, a small stage will appear in the center of the fighting stage, and the two will perform a concert. The camera will slowly move inwards to focus on the sisters, and the blast zones move as well, very much like the sudden death mode. The sisters can sing either Calamari Incantation or Ink Me Up, and each has its own dance tied to the song. Sukapon is the main character of Joy Mech Fight, a fighting game for the Famicom. The game was actually released after the release of the Super Famicom, but this period was the time that developers really mastered the development for the Famicom, so Joy Mech Fight is considered one of the games that best handles the console's capabilities. Sukapon is a comedian robot developed by Dr. Little Eamon and Dr. Ivan Walnuts, who created all sorts of robots together. However, one day Dr. Walnuts took military robots and appeared on TV declaring his intention to take over the world. Dr. Eamon summons Sukapon to his lab, where he outfits him into a military robot to stop Dr. Walnuts. Sukapon was planned to be an item in Melee, but was cut for unspecified reasons. In Ultimate, he made his debut, and he moves around the stage primarily spinning his detached limbs to hit players. He can attack by throwing a copy of his head at opponents, grabbing opponents and throwing them backwards, or rolling his body forward and pinballing around players and objects. As he's from a fighting game, Sukapon can also block attacks. Tiki joins as an assist trophy from the Fire Emblem series, who first debuted in Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light, all the way back on the Famicom in 1990. Tiki is a Maniki, or a Dragon King. These are a species of dragons who have learned to take the form of humans in order to avoid being hunted and to conserve their strength. Tiki first appeared as a young child, but throughout her various appearances in many Fire Emblem games, she's grown into an adult. But it's kind of one of those 5,000 year old 20 something looking deal, so I, I don't know how old she really is. Being a Manakeet, she of course has a dragon form, and this is her method of attack both in Fire Emblem and in Smash. She breathes multiple streams of fire around the playfield to attack opponents. Thwomp is one of the most recognizable enemies from the Mario series, which makes it pretty surprising that it took three games for him to be an assist trophy. The first ever appearance of Thwomps was in Super Mario Bros. 3 for the NES, but they've been in basically every Mario game since. They float in the air, and when a player comes into their line of sight, they will attempt to crush them by falling on them. Thwomp has been in Smash since Melee by being one of Kirby's stone transformations, with Melee and Brawl having the Mario 64 style, and Smash 4 and Ultimate having the modern style. Vince comes from everybody's favorite series, the Art Academy series. He's the host of the series and guides the player through the game's lessons to teach them how to paint. When summoned in Smash, Vince will paint over opposing players all kinds of different paintings, all of which follow the players and deal a bit of constant damage while they are covered. He can draw statues, tomatoes, seashells, cats, and birds. 
Dr. Wily appears in his Wily capsule as an assist trophy. Dr. Wily is the primary antagonist of the classic Mega Man games. In Mega Man 1, he reprogrammed all of the robot masters that Dr. Light made in an attempt to take over the world, and it was up to Mega Man to defeat the robot masters and ultimately defeat Dr. Wily. In subsequent games, Dr. Wily is always using robots in further attempts to take over the world, and every time he fails. Since Mega Man 4, Dr. Wily's boss fight has always used his Wily capsule and in Smash it uses his Mega Man 7 iteration. The capsule from this game is infamous for being one of the most difficult, as Dr. Wily's attacks deal massive damage while Mega Man's do very little. The elemental orbs he uses to attack are put directly into Smash. He will teleport to a random spot on the stage and launch out four elemental beams that are either fire, electricity, or ice, and they will lock on and hit players. He can also fire electric orbs at the ground, which will travel along the ground of the stage. If the Wily capsule is destroyed, Wily will fall out and hit the ground on his knees, begging for forgiveness, which is a long-standing joke in the Mega Man series at the end of every Wily boss fight. Yuri Kozukata is a character in the Fatal Frame series and the main protagonist of the fifth installment, Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water. In a car accident that killed her whole family, she developed a sixth sense which allows her to see ghosts, and she uses this ability to help other characters solve the strange events happening all around Mount Hikami. She takes pictures of ghosts with her camera obscura. In Smash, she uses the camera obscura to take photos of the other players. This will then stun the players and continually damage them for a decent amount of time even after she's left the field of play. And last but not least is Zero, one of the protagonists from the Mega Man X series and who eventually got his own series, Mega Man Zero. Zero was created by Dr. Wily to destroy the classic Mega Man, but he was far too violent and unstable, causing Wily to seal him away in a capsule. A hundred years later, a group of Maverick Hunters released Zero after they found Wily's lab, and Zero defeated them. The then leader of the Hunters, Sigma, fought Zero, and though Zero lost, he was freed from his instability and became a Maverick Hunter himself alongside Mega Man X. A bunch of other stuff happens, but that's basically the gist of where he comes from. Many of Zero's moves in Ultimate come straight from the Mega Man X series. His triple slash attack comes from Mega Man X4 and has become a staple since that game. Ryunjin is one of Zero's special abilities obtained by defeating Magma Dragoon. This move is also well known for being in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom and Marvel vs. Capcom. Kuenzan is obtained after defeating Split Mushroom and is an aerial somersault attack. Lastly is Genmu Zero, which is another move from Mega Man X5 and is also in Marvel vs. Capcom. And that does it for all of the assist trophies in Ultimate, and that completes every single new assist trophy that we have had up to this point. I'm not holding my breath for DLC assist trophies, but I'm also not completely writing it off either. So I'd love to know what your favorite assist trophy was from both Ultimate and overall. In Ultimate, there are just so many cool ones. I think I have to pick Shovel Knight just because I think it's so amazing that an indie rep got into Smash in a really, really significant way. And of course it makes sense that if any indie rep is going to be in Smash, it has to be Shovel Knight. I mean, he is just so iconic and they have such a good relationship with Nintendo, so I'm honestly not surprised. But I'd love to know what your favorite assist trophy was down in the comments below. If you guys are new, be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed the video at all, be sure to hit the like button. I will see you guys next time. Peace out, and I hope you have an awesome day.